A midsummer gardener's dream can turn into a nightmare with one false move of the pruners. Doug Maurer, president of Brian Kyle's Landscapes of Distinction, offers these tips on how to groom your landscaping. Okay, here we are. We're about mid-August. Probably everybody's gone out there before Memorial Day and planted all their, or actually done all their pruning, thought their job was done. But then the plants grew. Hence you end up with a plant with three foot of new growth to it, and maybe it needs a little shaping. I wouldn't wait too much longer, because the, the con about waiting longer, if you do it too late in the season, as you make these cuts, you're gonna encourage some new growth. Later in the season, that new growth could actually die off from the frost and freeze. So about this time of the month, come in here, clean up some of your excess growth on these, and don't wait too long. After Labor Day, I think it's time to put the shears to rest. Now, I want to caution you on one thing. These are bypass pruners. I've, I'll tell you that every time we do a pruning thing, we want to use bypass pruners. Next, we'll move over here to this clethra, also known as summer sweet. What we have here, basically some dead flowers. Any pruning I do on this just wants to make it look cleaner. We're going to cut off some of these flower heads. Uh, if you think that's too labor intense, don't worry about it. It isn't going to hurt the plant. But if you want the plant to look nice without all these brown flower heads on there, now would be the time to come in and cut them off. However, we'll move over here to these daisies. Now these daisies will pay you a dividend. If you come in here at this time of the year, this, obviously these spent flowers are making seed, spending their energy making seed. If you come in here and start cutting this plant back, cut into a few of the leaves here, but cut most of the dead out. Don't worry if you catch a, a daisy or two, put it in a base, take it in the house, enjoy it for the weekend. But anyway, cut these back, and as you cut these back, the new growth that is generated will develop some new buds, and if you don't do it too late in the season, you'll get another flush of flowers from those new buds. Won't be as prolific as the first flush of flowers, but you'll still get a new flush of flowers. Next, we'll move over to some daylilies. Everybody kind of usually wants to know what to do with their daylilies. Now that's a nice water feature. Is that functional in there? It's functional as far as a water feature goes. Uh, at one time it served its purpose, pumping water from a well, uh, but now we just generally use it, set it up as a nice little water feature in somebody's garden such as this. When we get into the daylilies, we got two things we're looking for. Uh, these flowers, actually they live by their name, daylily. They come out, they bloom one day only, that way if you look at a, a seed brack here, there were many, many pods on here, so this probably flowered for a good two to three weeks. So now they're pretty much over and done with. If you'd like, you can come in here and start cutting off some of these spent seed heads, because all they're doing is making seeds right now. You could also come in here and clean up some of the the stems from down below that may have started to turn a little bit yellow or brown, starting to look a little worse for wear, a little lack of water throughout the season. So now's the time to come in here and clean them up. Again, you can be the lazy gardener if you like. You don't have to do a thing because come frost and winter, this plant will die back to the ground and it's very easy to come back in the spring and just clean the whole thing up right then. But if you want to keep it looking neat and clean, a little haircut, like I need, uh, would do it just fine. Thanks, Doug. That's been part of the Brian Kyle's Landscapes of Distinction how-to series. To learn more, please visit www.briankiles.com or visit our YouTube page at youtube.com slash briankiles.